Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Saiki here, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to use one of the more underrated areas of the game, the T-Walls. Before we start, I want to thank Promeh and Dev for helping make this video. They are both top tier hunters and help make this video possible. So what are the T-Walls? The T-Walls are an area in Identity 5 where there are these two walls that have the shape of the letter T, and there's typically a window at the intersection of these two walls. They also very commonly come in pairs and can be most commonly found on church, lakeside, although those are more in the letter L, and Moonland most importantly, since the, that map has two of these T-Wall areas. Interestingly enough, this area actually first came from a game called Dead by Daylight, which Iron 5 was inspired by. In that game, the T-Walls are actually quite common and are important that you know how to use them. And the way you use them is you have to circle the windows in a specific way so that the hunter is not able to catch up to you. However, in Dead by Daylight, the hunters can't hit you through walls while in Identity 5 they can. And they also have a much better speed bonus in Identity 5 than they do in Dead by Daylight. However, there is still something to be learned from this area that looks quite strikingly similar to the ones we see on places like Moonlit. So how do you use the T-Wall areas? The most common way of using them, I'm not going to deny this, is you just want to get a boost out of them. A lot of times hunters are too strong in this game for you to be able to loop them here. And so you just want to take a window boost away from this area to a much better area typically because that is going to give you the best way of approaching the situation because of how most hunters can hit through the walls anyway. However, there are going to be times that you need to use this area because it is going to be a last resort. Maybe it's your only option. And it is helpful to know how to at least not get hit by a basic attack so you know what you're doing here so that you can at least force out an ability from the hunter. So here I drew a little bit of a diagram to help you guys understand what direction you're trying to approach these windows from. And the main idea is you're trying to get the hunter to follow you from the outside of the windows. You, you don't want them to go in between the windows because then what happens is the hunter is able to get you from the sides of the windows and they're able to easily go around the windows that way. But if you can get them on the flat surface on the outside of the wall, so what happens is they have to respect that wall. They need to go completely around it if they want to approach the window from either side. As opposed to if you just use whatever window was closest, what would happen is the hunter would then be able to easily come around from either side of the wall and you don't want that. So instead, you're trying to get the hunter from the long side of the wall. That is the goal here. You need to get them on the long side of the wall. And I have some gameplay to show you guys of this, that you're trying to get the hunter from the long side of the wall. If they try going through the window, you can still keep doing the same thing because most hunters actually take too long to vault the window before you can get to the other window. So you can just keep doing this over and over if they keep trying to vault the window. It's not going to work. Unless they're like maybe Valinus or Hellember or Clown or Gamekeeper. Those are the four fastest vaulters in the game. But otherwise, this should work. Even against those hunters, I'm pretty sure this will still work. I'll let the rest of this play out. But just know that once you take a hit in this area, once you force out a hunter's ability and then take a hit, then would be a good time to leave this area. Usually your boost is enough to get you to a pallet if just walking there wasn't enough. The last situation when using this area is what do you do when the hunter goes between the two windows? This is a problem because what it means is the hunter is going to go around the wall and try to get you on the wrong side of the wall. This is a very common mistake I see used in this area. Here's an example of it. So typically a survivor will go around this wall, maybe vault the window immediately without even seeing where the hunter is. They'll see the hunters coming for them. They'll go around the wall. They'll just use whatever window they want and they use the wrong window. You see in this situation, this window is bad because now the hunter is on the wrong side meaning they can easily go either left or right they can mind game you they could get a terror shock on you maybe with a blink maybe you'll slow ball although i will make a guide about how to not slow ball that are, those are still serious possibilities if you're starting off the game and even if you're a pro player this is still a problem because you will still get hit most of the time so how do you use this area when the hunter goes between the two windows? The best thing to do is to usually just transition away, but if you absolutely have to use this area, meaning that you can't just transition away without first taking a basic hit, then you can just go around with the hunter. If you see the hunter going around, you should also go around. Don't try to camp the window. Don't try to do anything fancy. Just go around with them and reuse that same window. Because you already know, like you guys saw in that previous example, that you're just going to get cornered at that other window if you try using it when they go around it. So you're going to have to use the same window. And this is actually really good for you. Because now what it means is the hunter is still 
at a disadvantage here because they're still on the long side of the wall. They can't just easily go left and right and hit you. Notice how I'm paying attention to this small gap in the wall where I can see the hunter's red light so I know which side they're coming from. This is very important to be able to pay attention and not get hit when the hunter's going on the other side of the wall. Once again, I'm going to pull off the same trick again where I see the hunter go between the two windows. I see them through the small gap and I know exactly where to go so I don't get hit by a basic hit without even knowing which side the hunter is going. And see, the hunter even tries double backing here. There's no way he's going to hit me as long as you're paying attention. Right here, I do get a little bit stuck, but for the sake of argument, you guys get the idea. As long as the hunter is not using their abilities, you shouldn't be getting hit here by a basic swing. That's pretty much all there is to this area and what you need to know about it. The last T-wall area that I haven't gone over yet is the one at church, but this time I'm going to show you guys a real life example on a stream, by the way I stream every Tuesday and Thursdays 20 to 22 EST, where knowing this knowledge has saved my life. So right here, you guys see the hunter's over here, there's no way I can make it to that gate, I'm going to get knocked on if I try to run to that gate, so I'm cornered here. I think this area is a little bit easier to use just because we have this pallet in the way, so if we ever mess up, we have it in the way, but since it's a ripper, I kind of have to drop it right away because that's that invisibility is going to cause a lot of problems if I don't get it out earlier. Right here, I'm trying to see if there's dungeon, but I don't hear dungeon there. I think earlier in the stream, I saw dungeon and my chat was trying to tell me it's not there anyway. Uh, but here, there's something I can do. I have to kite here and I'm using my knowledge here. Right here, pay careful attention to how I'm not vaulting either of these windows. I'm not vaulting either of these windows because right now he can easily go around both of them. So I can't really vault either of them. I'm waiting for a better opportunity for when the hunter makes himself vulnerable and forces himself on one side of the window more than the other. So right here is a great opportunity. He gets stuck in the bees and I vault this window because no matter which side he goes around now, I'm not going to get hit. And right here is doing the same thing. I'm not going to use this window anymore. I'm going to use this one because this one's more annoying to go around. And I'm going to go around this wall. I see he's going around. I will go around with him. And I'm going to vault this back. He's going to go backwards. But because I see that, I'm going to go back to this other window because it's more annoying to go around. I dodged the foggy blade. And if you guys check in the top right left corner, the tension is gone. We escaped. At the game, we're knowing this knowledge. Knowing when to not vault the window. Knowing when to vault the window. And knowing when to go back has saved our life. If you guys want to see more streams like this, go ahead and check us out. Tuesday and Thursday, 20 to 22 EST, you might learn something. I also have the times in the description. I also have a Discord server where you guys can join and get announcements for anything that I do, identity 5 related or non identity 5 related, or you guys can just talk amongst yourself, whatever you want to do. Finally, if you like this video, make sure you like it so more people can find it and get better at the game because we all hate randoms and we want the randoms to get better at the game. So make sure you like it so they find this video. With that being said, guys, thank you all so much for joining along this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and take care, guys. This has been Psyche.